All right, let's talk about compliance. Okay. So, by the end of 2023, 75% of the world's population is going to be covered by some form of modern data privacy regulation. Yeah. What kind of impact is that going to have, or does it currently have on software companies? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a sea change that's been happening kind of out from underneath software companies in which a lot of people haven't even seen how much it's shifting, right? And, you know, to me, all these privacy regulations, the big impact that they have is, is in um, taking data that we used to think of as kind of benign data and turning it into sensitive data that's like a hot potato that you touch it and you can get burnt, right? And, and that now includes like names, email addresses, right? A phone number, that's now called PII, personally identifiable information. If it's personally identifiable, it's regulated. And if it's, and, and that regulation, those regulations have all kinds of these requirements, but including that you do extra stuff to protect it and having penalties if you lose it, if you get breached. And those penalties can be steep in some cases. And, and so, you know, they've made the holding of personal information kind of more toxic, more dangerous, more potentially costly. And, mm -hmm. Um, and in many cases, there are rules like in GDPR, there are rules that require that you take extra precautions with that data. And if you're not, you know, well, if something goes wrong, the fines will be higher. It's basically the consequence. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of changes. And over the past few years, there have been several privacy shields uh, that have attempted to make it possible for the U.S., and US companies to hold EU personal data. But we've seen two of those come and go, and they're working on a third, and things are just kind of up in the air. So what can companies do with that uncertainty to make sure they're actually complying, even though there's a lot of uncertainty? Yeah, so you're talking about the Schrems 2 case, and, and GDPR in particular, although the first one, our safe harbor agreement, which was kind of like Privacy Shield 1.0, that one was struck down purely on the basis of, of the European Union Constitution and privacy guarantees there. And so what, what we see happening is that, you know, countries spy on each other. The U.S.'s surveillance laws and spying laws allow them to spy on non-U.S. citizens and, and people who are outside of the U.S., and that means EU citizens. And that basically flies in the face of the privacy guarantees in the EU. And so, you know, w we have been unable to come up with a framework that is acceptable to the EU courts that allows a U.S. company to hold the private data, that toxic data of EU citizens. And, you know, this is, this is interesting in a lot of ways, but, but one of the things I think people haven't, you know, widely understood is that there are technical solutions to this, especially when married with contractual and legal uh, uh, solutions. And, and in particular, there are encryption patterns that can protect the privacy of those EU citizens, okay? End-to-end -end encryption is one of them. But also, there's server-side patterns. Our SAS Shield product allows business customers at least to hold their own keys and hold them in Europe and, and under their control. And then, you know, in these scenarios, it means that if, if a you know, warrantless order or a secret order were to come in to a company to produce some data, they would produce that data encrypted. And then if the U.S. government needed the key to decrypt that data, they would need to go to through the EU courts or through their partners in law enforcement in the EU. And, you know, that changes the whole thing and does protect it from the concerns of Schrems 2, gives you a full technical and legal basis for holding the data um, together with, with standard contractual clauses and things. So, you know, the, these privacy laws, it's been interesting to see, right? GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulations, they went into effect in 2018, okay? There was, at that time, a privacy shield agreement that allowed the U.S. companies to hold EU citizen data, and it got struck down by the Schrems 2 case. And, you know, there's all these companies that are going through court cases right now in which they may be fined huge amounts of money because of this. And I guarantee you that success there will beget more success against U.S. companies. And it is a massive problem for the U.S. software industry. Like, yeah. like massive. And, you know, if I'm, if you're, if you're writing software today, it behooves you to think about maybe technical measures you can take to protect the privacy of EU citizen data and really of all P 
PII because this is going to bite you in Brazil and every and you know if you do business in China and everywhere else too unless you solve the problem with technical measures. Great.